So one of the first things to say is just a little bit of context, introduced Ultrasock as a company, and also to talk a little bit about philosophy. So one of the things we do as a company is we're an IP vendor that makes technology that helps people develop complicated SOCs. Those SOCs might include risk five, they might include other things. But on chip, there is functional IP. And of course, people in different realms, people are familiar with this. There is JTAG for the ARM world, there is CoreSight. We have our equivalent, which supports risk five and takes it up a layer. Then you are taking that information into a, the software domain. There are development tools, GUIs, IDEs, etc., uh, both open source and commercial. And again, I'll be talking about some of those, but we have our own. And finally, there is trying to make sense of that information. Having it on a screen is one thing, but then engineers write analytics, they write techniques to search through things, they're writing test code, they're doing continuous integration, and you must have some intelligence around that. What Ultrasoc does, what our product is, is we're not a Risk v core vendor. We're here because we're very involved in the Risk v ecosystem, we're supporting Risk v and we have got technology that makes this stack much, much easier, much, much more efficient for engineers developing complicated SOCs that could include Risk v or other processes. But we make development easier, we make de debugging more efficient, we make it faster to find problems and solve problems. Within the Risk v world, just to talk big picture, Risk v you know, what we are involved in this, we've been involved for more than two years supporting Risk v as development tools, as debug systems, etc. etc. I'm working with a lot of the most important people within this community. So we partner with Sci Five, we partner with Andes, uh, Western Digital is a customer, um, lots of other customers using us for Risk v Some public, others, some very big names are using Risk v are using us, but are not yet announced. But you can see you know, we're very involved, we've been very involved, supporting development tools, debugging, and trace within the Risk v community. So we're committed to this, in, in this ecosystem. Risk v as a, as a thing, since it has moved out of academia a few years ago, since there have been companies like Sci5 started up to support it, then there are commercial companies adopting it, taking it over. So people like Andes, people like Codasip, they're not startups, they're not pure play Risk v vendors, they've already had Risk v architectures, sorry, they've already had processor architectures, but they're moving over to Risk v because there's a very good ISA, and there's a community, and there's an ecosystem. And that massively leverages what you can do. One company on your own is a limit to the amount you can do. One company is part of a community with a standard ISA, a compatible ecosystem, tools, development environments. That has a huge amount of uh, synergies, a huge multiplying factor. And that's really where we are now. We've moved from academic curiosity through the phase of this is quite interesting but, and it's now very, very real. There are multi-billion dollar companies who are switching over their architectures to use Risk v commercially. Uh, you know, companies like Western Digital ship a billion cores a year, and they've announced that, and going up to two billion, all of those two billion will be Risk v in the future. Companies like Nvidia using Risk v uh, Google in their Pixel phones, the their homemade processors, the Minion cores, etc., using Risk v And then some very exciting startups, Sci5, Cintacore, Esperanto, and a number of others, basing architectures around Risk v So it's very much crossing over into the mainstream. 
It's interesting that it is slightly geographic. It's much more mature in the States, much less mature in Europe, and Asia somewhere in the middle. China is adopting it big time, India is adopting it big time. But driven by Silicon Valley, driven by the States, the market is happening, the reality is happening, and as I'll go on to talk about, that means the ecosystem and the infrastructure to make things real are happening. What Ultrasoc does is we help you understand everything that's going on in a complicated chip. So if this is your system on chip, if this is your architecture, increasingly lots of processors, lots of processors of different architectures. It's not unusual. A lot of our customers might have high-end application processors from ARM, an A53, A73 class, then a DSP from Siva or Extensa, and then a number of RISC-V cores as accelerators, controllers, supervisors, low-end processors. That's a pretty standard architecture for chips being designed this year. But of course it means developing them is difficult. What are the development tools? What's the design environment? What we do is we can bring all of those things into one coherent fabric. So we've got a vendor agnostic development environment that supports ARM and ARC. And obviously, being here, we support RISC-V. Ta-da! And we bring that together. Then we can tie these things together so you can have one development environment, one GUI, and we've got rid of silos. It's not one tool for ARM, one tool for SIVA, one tool for RISC-V. There is an integrated tool where all of those things are coherent together. You can bring that off chip in different ways, JTAG if you want. We can also monitor hardware so we can see what's happening on buses, transactions, memory controllers, and then bring that information, high speed information, out in different ways. So lots of different ways you can work with a chip, lots of different ways you can get information, interact with things, understand what is happening inside your system. And that's critical. A complicated SOC these, year, these days might cost you 100 million, 200 million dollars to design. It's not unusual. Huge amount of that is actually towards the back end. People think it's mask making costs or fab costs, but most of the costs these days are in verification, integration and software. So being able to understand what is happening inside the chip, being able to look at your processors, being able to do trace, being able to look at the interactions between processors is critical to helping control that cost and accelerate time to market. And we can also monitor other functionality within the chip. So embedded logic analyzers, looking at GPUs, etc etc are all supported. So it needs to be heterogeneous. There are very few systems that will only have one architecture. It's possible but it, it gets a limitation. There are different processor architects out there that have different strengths and as an SOC architect what you want to do is use best of breed and be able to combine those flexibly. So you need to be able to support that and RISC-V is a major piece of that puzzle. Any development environment must support both commercial tools and open source tools. So things like GDB, OpenOCD are excellent, they're very good tools, but there are also tools like Lauterbach, IAR, and engineers do, a lot of engineers do like those, do prefer those, and have invested a lot in them whether it's financially or mental investment in learning how to use them, learning how to make the most of them. So anyone supporting that environment needs to work with those tools. So part of the maturation of RISC-V is the fact that now those companies are involved. If you want to use Lauterbar with RISC-V, you can. If you want to use IAR with RISC-V, you can. These things exist as well as 
the very good open source tools. The foundation is involved in specifying things and formalizing them. And that is, as anyone who's worked with standards or consensus can testify, difficult and painful at times. Uh, but it is important. So there's a balancing act that we need the standards and we must get those standards finished and shipped and ratified so that people can be making product based around them. There are a lot of companies who have policies that they will not design a system based on pre-standard architectures. So as a foundation, it's important we get that standard frozen because otherwise it bottlenecks everything else. But standards move on. So it's important to get a version 1.0 ratified and shipped and then work on 1.1, 2.0, etc. with new features. And that is pretty much happening. And then finally, we must never forget in this world you know, that this is a commercial system. We need safety. We need security. Those are no longer optional extras. Those are mandatory functions. Other architectures, other cores do have them. RISC-V is now working on them and developing them. It's happening. I mentioned we had an IDE. This is the Ultrasoc IDE. It's Eclipse. It's based on GDB, very extensible, open, based on very familiar tools. But as I say, also some of the other common well, it's the Lauterbachs, the Imperas, and people like that who develop their own tools. That ecosystem is now happening. So if you're working with RISC-V, you can use the tools that you like to use and are familiar. If you're designing a commercial system, it's different if you're an academic. It's different if you're designing something for fun. But a commercial system, there's things, you know, there's reasons people are adopting RISC-V. So it's well understood in other domains about why open source is good. And we're getting there with RISC-V. So we're getting this interesting balance of co-opetition and competition. That there are probably six different people doing commercial calls within the foundation. sci 5 Cintacore, Andes, Exhibit Cloud Bear, Greenwaves are all part of this stand but there are other others, Codasip, Cortus, etc. And then, of course, there are the free ones. You can go to ETH, you can go to UC Berkeley and download Rocket, you can go to Western Digital and download Swerve. So there is a balance between free, open source, but not that particularly supported, and commercial with quality, test vectors and support, which is helping drive the industry forward. There is innovation, there is competition, and there is a range of prices to suit different people. And that's a change. You know, that historically, the processor market has been quite dominated by one or two people. And there wasn't, the pace of innovation was nothing like as fast, and the cost pressures were obviously different. But, you know, so this is changing the business model for people designing SOCs in a very healthy way. It's opening things up. It's creating new opportunities. It's not just about cheap. It's certainly not just about free. That's a big fallacy. You know, the, the great quote, open source is free as in free speech, not as in free beer. Free is a minor part of the RISC-V ecosystem. It's not the most interesting part. The most interesting part is the innovation and excitement that is coming out of all these different people building on a standard ISA, leveraging an ecosystem in, with compatibility and able to develop new ideas, but still retaining that baseline of consistency. And that matters. I mean, if you're talking to the big companies, the Western Digitals, the NVIDIAs, the Qualcomms, the Googles, the Samsungs, the Huawei's, etc., etc. They're not going to change everything at a moment's notice. And they don't, you know, they don't just buy an ISA. They're buying a solution. They're buying into an ecosystem. 
Development tools matter. Trust matters. Security matters. All of these things are essential. And it's the cost of the core per se is only a small part of that decision making process. As I said, free is not the most interesting part. The most interesting part is that totality and the fact that Risk Five can do that because of an ecosystem. A commercial vendor can, must deliver everything themselves, whereas this community can deliver the sum of the parts. So it's very, very powerful. There's a huge amount of innovation happening because it's been driven by the best of breed of anyone doing things. And that is, that's the win. And that really leads on to this point. You know, ideas are cheap. Anyone can have an idea. It's execution that matters. Being able to take an idea and make it real in a high quality way is critical. That is the multiplier, that is the essential thing. In exactly the same way, ISAs, Information Instruction Set Architecture, that's table stakes. What matters is the execution. And the way that we're doing that as a community, that execution is coming out of the strength of that community. So it's not any one company doing it, it's the best of every company, the best of everyone, cooperating and competing. And if you don't like one core, there's another core, which is software compatible, but may be better on PPA, or may have a unique instruction set, or may have a new unique feature that you value. Similarly, if you don't like one development tool, there's another development tool, but they're all consistent, they're all compatible, because they're all building on that same baseline. So ideas are cheap, it's execution that matters. ISAs are cheap. I mean, God knows how many ISAs there are. Any student in the world, any computer architecture course in the world, you know, writing an instruction set is a third year module. It's not, that's not the important point. The important point is executing that to turn that into a product and to turn that product into a viable ecosystem. So, to summarize, Risk Five is crossing the chasm. You know, it's moving beyond enthusiasm. It's moving beyond an interesting idea. It's being adopted by some of the biggest, best, smartest companies in the industry. Western Digital, Nvidia, Qualcomm, Google, etc., etc., are doing this for very good reasons, and that's because it's commercial, it's viable, it's not an academic curiosity, it makes good business sense. And that is going to be a huge part of the industry. It's not going to be the only part of the industry, it's not going to consume anything. You know, this is a competitive world, um, ISAs live for a very long time, software lives for a very, very, very long time. You know, if you remember the Y2K bug, that was all COBOL written in the 60s and 70s, and it still matters. So software lives for a long time. So instruction sets, cores, architectures are long lived. They don't change overnight. But Risk Five is increasingly a player within that, gaining presence, gaining a market share. And that's because of the strength of this community and of the development tools and the environment. And as I say, Ultrasoc, we're very pleased to be part of that. We believe we've got some unique technology that fundamentally helps people develop very complicated SOCs for Risk V and for other architectures and makes a compelling difference to time to market, product quality and profit. But we're doing that in this context within the Risk V world. And I would encourage you all to have a look at the various parts of that Risk V community because there are some very interesting things going on. Thank you very much.